Hi, this is Bitluni and today I will share my first month of experience that I made with resin-based 3D printers and I can tell you my opinion completely changed on those. As you might know, I made a deal with Anycubic to review these printers so I can give two away to schools and youth centers. I've done a lot with FDM printers in the past, built my own one and even my master thesis was on this topic. I always thought FDM printing would be good enough for me since laser-based resin printers have been expensive and were not even fast. However, the technology improved significantly in the past years with DLP and TFT based printers that can expose a complete layer at a time. There was even another improvement of speed and cost with monochromatic TFT based printers which have a better light transmission at a lower complexity. You don't know what the heck am I talking about? Let's take a look how these printers work. The objects are printed from this kind of resin. It cures when it's exposed to UV light. The printer has such an UV light built in. The resin is filled in this vet here with an elastic transparent base. The build platform where the print sticks to is lowered into the vet. Between the UV light and the vet is the TFT which masks the shape of the layer to be printed. After 3 seconds the layer is peeled off the bottom and the next layer is made. I can even demonstrate it without a printer to show how simple this method is. I just put a little bit of the resin in the vat to not spill anything. Then put in the build platform. As you can see I have now a thin layer of resin between the platform and the elastic bottom. Whichever areas of this will be exposed to the UV light will harden now and stick to the platform. We can use a mask to only harden the shape we want. I'm using carton here while the printer uses a TFT screen to mask the shape. Now it's exposed to the UV for a few seconds. After that the shape should be hardened and we can peel it off sticking to the build platform. You can imagine that would be nearly impossible if the bottom wouldn't be from this elastic FEP film. At this point new resin flows between the bottom and the hardened layer and we could expose the next layer. Looks like our shape really hardened. Fantastic! Let me wash that with some IPA and take a look. That totally worked, cool. Here it is, really thin. The resolution of these printers are around 50 micrometers per voxel. That's a pixel in 3D, like a small cube. So you can print structures that are as thin as a human hair. And this is how a resin printer basically works. But how did these printers perform? I did a really long stream where I started using them. The Photon Mono and the Mono SE both print from a USB drive. The Mono is the cheaper model, the print speed and quality is the same. They only differ in build quality and features. Both have a nice touch display that's showing the models and the current layers that are printed. The Mono has the essential functionalities, while the SE has a sturdy metal case, some air filtering, a Wi-Fi app for monitoring, and the build platform is easier to calibrate. But the best feature though is that you can close the lid with one hand. You need that when removing a dripping build platform with the other hand. If you are on a budget I recommend you get the mono and add a handle to the cover. However the air filtering and the Wi-Fi of the SE have some potential. The simpler Z calibration is nice but it's not done on daily basis. Unfortunately the app is only for monitoring so you can't upload a new file remotely. I hope they add this feature with a firmware update at some point. I had a few successful prints but I tried to print really small items to keep the print time and the stream time short. What I didn't realize until later is that it doesn't matter if you print a teeny tiny figurine or a build plate full of items. It takes the same time, only the layer count matters. Coming from FDM printing this blew my mind. After that I tried to print a lot of things and stuff the build plate full of items. My learning curve was really steep. There is a lot you can do wrong. Here is an example. Both models are printed with the same printer and the same material. This model ripped here which is a common mistake that can happen with these printers. The problem was I didn't punch any holes in that model here at the bottom which formed a vacuum and kept the resin in the cavity of the model. At some point the platform pulled the lowest layer above the surface of the liquid resin and the inner cavity emptied at once. Since second mistake I only put a few supports on this model and the weight dropped instantly, 
The support sprung back a little and the bottom of the model didn't reach the bottom of the vat anymore. This is how these gaps happen. This one here was able to close slowly from the side where it was still able to attach the consecutive layers. In this one I punched a few holes in the slicer to prevent a vacuum and added a lot more supports. But why is that one so matte and this so clear? It's the same resin. On this one I washed the model afterwards in isopropyl alcohol, IPA. And that one was only cured. The benefits of washing the model is that you get rid of the remaining liquid resin quickly. That improves the precision of the print for the fine details. But you will be also able to make out individual layers or voxels, which makes the matte surface. On top of that you might get stains if you use the IPA too often, since there is old resin in the solution. So this model is washed, this one isn't. I simply let it drip off and cured it in the curing station directly. A Patreon of mine tipped me off that I could use spray lacquer to make it clear again, but that unfortunately only works for outside features. If you are wondering, this print took 5.5 hours at 50 micrometer resolution. To get a comparison, I also printed it using FDM at 0.3 mm layer height and it took 6 hours. I used clear PLA, but you simply can't print completely transparent with FDM unless you are using a bunch of tricks, a long print time and some polishing afterwards. Okay, you could use this printer to print figurines in awesome detail, but I was really hooked with the idea of printing really transparent stuff. After a few experiments printing lenses, I tried Fresnel lenses, which are completely flat and printing from 5 to 10 minutes. After that I ended up in a rabbit hole developing lenticular lenses, which you probably know from 3D postcards. I couldn't stop there, but that's a whole new topic, which we take a look in another video. So subscribe to not miss that. I also experienced a few limitations, especially in the beginning I had a few failed prints where the model detached from the build platform. In that case you need to remove the resin and filter it through the included funnel to get rid of any debris. Then remove the failed print that sticks to the FEP film with the plastic spatula. Bulging the elastic film from the back helps here. If a failed print happens you might need to repeat the Z calibration. I used some sandpaper to roughen the surface of the platform. That improved the adhesion and I almost never experienced failed prints again. By the way, if you can't hear any unsticking sound during the print, you can always pause it and check if it's still good. Speaking of adhesion, the first layers at the build platform are never true to dimension since these layers are exposed for a long time for better adhesion. So if you want to print precisely, you need to use a raft and support structures. Big flat objects need to be printed at an angle, otherwise they will hang true when being peeled off during the print. These limitations made my life hard printing gears, since the supports need to attach to the lowest points of the model, and that are always the gear teeth at the perimeter. The best use case of these printers are still to print models that require a high level of detail. I couldn't imagine printing a figurine like that using FDM. If you need the highest level of detail, washing the model is really recommended. The washing and curing station is great and easy to use. To smoothen rough surfaces and support points, I used a fine paintbrush with resin and cured it afterwards. For comparison, this figurine was washed, this wasn't. Some detail is lost, but on the other hand, you don't get any discolorations. If you want to paint it afterwards, I would wash it for the highest detail. During the last month I also tried different resins, for example this echo resin here, which is harder to get, but I really didn't notice a big difference. It really smells nasty as the other one. I also bought some extra vets with um, some silicon covers. They are not very expensive. Um, it's quite handy to have some different types of resins just kept in there for the case you need them. And I even managed to damage one of the FEP films by dropping the build platform. As a quick hack I used scotch tape to temporarily fix it until I received the new FEP films. These are really easy to replace. You simply undo the bolts with the included tools from the vet.
put the new film in between and screw the bolts in again. The bolts will punch the holes in the film by themselves. Ah, nice and fresh FEP film. Let's put it to a conclusion. I'm really surprised how good these are. Resin printing simply opened a complete new world of possibilities that I want to explore now. Don't get me wrong, it's still messy and smelly, but it's fast, precise and complements my lab by a new awesome tool that you should try at some point. The Inucubic printers come with all the tools and software you need, you just need to get the resin and some ideas. The printers are well built and don't feel like DIY projects. The features are great, you can pause prints, there are some safety features and I even genuinely tripped over a power cable while printing a bigger model. And I was surprised it continued flawlessly after I plugged it in again. Check out the links in the description for the best deals on these printers. Thank you for watching, I hope you found this helpful or at least entertaining. Thanks to Anycubic for supporting my charity and thank you to all my amazing supporters. I see you next time. Bye!